So we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with a reaction video. Now we've been going crazy with the tier list. I did just do my bracket for the playoffs yesterday. And we've been going crazy. I will be doing the NFL awards very soon. But today we got y'all boys with a reaction video back on the Thinking Football channel. And today he made a video going over the 49ers struck gold. And I'm thinking he's talking about that quarterback Brock Purdy that they got at the very last pick of the draft. Now... If you guys want more of these reaction videos, more of these NFL videos more frequently, all y'all got to do is like the video. Hopefully you like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, let's hop into it. Mr. Irrelevant says who? The very last pick of the seventh round. Not much of anything was expected out of the rookie. That's actually so disrespectful to call him that. I don't. I didn't always remember them calling him that, but what's like the context to it? You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Brock Purdy. With the That's third so overall pick from the year before touted as a starter, and Jimmy G untraded, the 49ers were at best hoping for a project QB that returns dividends on the pick he's drafted at. Just making the roster would be an achievement for Brock Purdy. Expecting to ride the bench the and learn the NFL oh. ropes, this game has a cruel nature for thrusting so, those unexpected these are like into the tight spotlight. Window throws, to be and this with time, you. it was Purdy's turn to be next man up. Shoved in as the starter of a playoff prowling team, the former third stringer oh has gosh, not only wide. kept That's that ship afloat, but has put up some stellar reps on tape. So how's the young dude done it? Kittle's Let's just dive like in that, and man. find out. They play again this The West this Coast week. system that Kyle Shanahan comes from requires quarterbacks to play conduct. All right, before we go too far, before y'all see my NFL uh, playoff bracket, I want to ask y'all a question. Who do y'all think is the dark horse of the playoffs? Who do y'all think is going to win the Super Bowl? And who y'all think going to win the MVP? I want to make sure I ask that before we go too far. I think the dark horse is really the, the 49ers, man. I like their team against the defense how the opposition aligns and rolls will determine where to go with the ball always attacking the weakness the defense has to give up purdy's been great at this able to scan the field and throw under this pressure defense, I'm gonna be here miami are showing a six-man pressure like, look with both in backers McCaffrey, walked like, up to the a gaps and a three high middle field close look with the triangle tipped by javon holland this is a pretty good indicator of cover three and the formation helps decode the blitz look George Kittle is in the backfield, swapped with McCaffrey from the bunch. And with Holland this far off on the third and five, Purdy can be pretty sure the backers will drop. Post snap, he gets his eyes to the strong safety, the key to reading a defense. And here, Eric Rowe simply shifts to his right without gaining any depth, taking the flat as the corner bails to the deep third. Reading this, Purdy knows the post is gonna come open in the window between the middle backers. Winding up when his man's covered, meaning he's open. Third and five again here against the Commanders, and it's once again all about the safeties. They present that three high umbrella, but Derek Forrest will creep down to form a Tampa two, opening up the post shot with Washington's corners playing very spread in the invert two deep shell. Purdy goes to his first read Ayuk, but the corner bailed hard and Bobby McCain is lurking on it, revealing zone. Jennings on the whip is also covered, so Purdy gets to Kittle on the third read. And with Forrest dropping down to play Tampa, he's flat-footed on Kittle. And this is a inch-perfect round. Look at this play. He had both of them. Both of them. Literally had both of them. All he had to do was really put this in the middle of one of them, and his team is getting a touchdown. They just had to not mess it up for each other. Like, they're, they're, like they're both wide open. That's an actually interesting play because you usually don't want your players running in the same area, to be honest. Rainbow to the post. And here against the Bucks, he perfectly reads the blitz and shows he knows how to read leverage. The Bucks show too high, but this is a bit more complex. With both middle backers with the cross blitz, Keanu Neal will drop down to play the middle zone, and Tyron Shoyunkar will drop from left edge to play the flat in the 3-3 fire zone. The Bucks aren't playing standard spot drop here, but match principles. In the most basic terms, the defenders read the releases of the receivers before matching up in man when the offense reveals their plans. We've got a whole video on match zone and pattern matching coming up, so make sure to subscribe for that. I know in the NFL they supposed to have a lot of ma discipline, like zone discipline, but this is very interesting to me. This is often deployed against trips formations to counter the three-man advantage, and you can see Neil who rolls from safety with his eyes solely focused on the trip side. This leaves a two-on-two -two advantage on the backside, and the simplest answer to a complex defense is often the best. Shoyunkar will leave Kittle for Carlton as he's going vertical, 
and that leaves him out leverage on the skinny post. Look at this Ayuk route, man. That's nice a great timing route, Ayuk. And a good chunk. He ain't throw the ball to you. So but we've you, shown you, you three you nice right reads there, boy. under little to no pressure so far. But what really stands out is Purdy's fearlessness and assurance in the pocket. He's pretty accurate. Normally, with the third string QB thrust throws in for mid season, you aren't exactly confident in his abilities, nor want to stay where the chaos lies. But so far, Brock Purdy seems unbothered by the rush. This is in his first game thrust into the lineup after the Jimmy G. A lot of these highlights are from this Miami Dolphins game. That's the, the crazy part. And this is his first look. game. While it might look a little like a single high, that's Xavier Howard drifting outside the hashes, acting as if he's playing man match on the bunch. And Miami will shift seven up to the line of scrimmage, one more than the 49ers can block. Miami, as usual, drops the D tackles away from the line turn. More in our Lamar video for that wrinkle, sending everybody else. And this gets a free rusher in Jalen Phillips right into the ribs of Purdy. Watch as Brock gets absolutely lit up while standing I've strong. Been, I've in seen the that play multiple different a dime angles. To kill on everything. The post. That's a crazy the play, man. The trigger's so quick. Eric Rowe is completely flat great accuracy too, bro. That's, that's a great big accuracy. 15-yard gain while getting smothered by a 250-pound lineman. Then afterwards, great he proceeds to get up and prepare and he for threw the it next at the play as if time. nothing ever happened. Here it is again against the Bucks. They're gonna run a nice ET stunt to get a free rusher in Purdy's face, but there's no wavering in the rookie's nerves. Brandon Ayuk runs an absolutely disgusting stop and go route, leaving Jamil Dean in the dust. I'm trying to tell y'all, Ayuk route running is. <laughs> I couldn't even get it off. He killed him. That, you can't do no better route than that. He got him stopping. And he got him going towards him, trying to break on the ball, and he's gone. That's a perfect route. He short armed this bad. This underthrown a lot. And although the pressure short arms the throw slightly, this is incredible bravery and such a good route that IU can slow to catch it before the score. Magnificent work from the receiver. That's a perfect route. And here it is again against the Bucks. This time, I've been an IU guy for a minute. Tampa man. tries something new with it, the man. backers up in two point stances and the D tackles behind them. And with this alignment, Purdy can be pretty sure the blitz is coming. The backers attack both guards, leaving Jake Brent. Man, what the hell is this? Buccaneers, what is this? Why do y'all have the D tackles up with the linebackers? These niggas trolling. Build the center to block the D tackles, of which he gets neither. But good pass protection buys Purdy a fraction of a second. Shit, that shit worked. I ain't gonna lie, that's, that's kinda OP. Looking at it like that, that's kind of OP. They got one center to block both D tackles. Oh, they got Kittle in the backfield too. Hey, I like these looks that they got with Kittle in the backfield to help as a blocker. That's kind of wild. I ain't seen that too many teams do they tight end like that, but I've seen a couple formation they had Kittle like this. The Niners have once again swapped McCaffrey and Kittle, allowing for a bigger frame in protection, and Kittle gets low to slow down the rush. McCaffrey is frankly a cheat code, losing his man with the stutter step, and Purdy once again puts this up. This time McCaffrey with just pinpoint code, back man. shoulder precision. He's like another wide receiver on the field. Far beyond just standing. We already strong, knew that though. Purdy's pocket movement. We already knew that over here. Top tier. Both if you see my running back tier list, you understand why I he put him at uh, best. He when to step up. He just how to snake against the oncoming fair. rush and when the appropriate time is to bail. He just juke dealing Devin with the five-man rush from the Tampa Bay defense. Brock maneuvers his body through the incoming pressure smoothly while finding the available George Kittle throw. underneath for the run too. He makes it look simple, but that's a testament to his skill. Against the Dolphins here, they'll again show a six-man I mean, pressure throw, but but drop out play. in favor of man with two robbers. There was a chance. 49ers, I'm going to be honest, though. I'm going to be honest. A lot of this stuff may not be a lot like on no Patrick Mahomes level. That's not what he's there to do, though. Like You know what I'm saying? He's not there to do that. You know what I'm saying? His, the 49ers literally don't need that. They just need a competent quarterback that can move the ball up the field and be able to get them points because their offense is so good. They have good running backs, good tight end, great, good uh, wide receiver core, and their defense is going to do the job. They just need a quarterback that's going to be able to get the ball to their best players. And Brock Purdy has done more than enough. It's just that simple at the end of the day. It's a Debo across the middle off the rub concept. But the change and he up slows the read, and the internal clock thing. goes off before he can hospital pass it. Knock on wood, but He does yeah. a great job to stand tall in the pressure despite the wall coming at him, then bailing at three seconds when pressure finally does break through. It's a good accuracy, He keeps man. his eyes up the whole way, knowing Debo's man is far behind him, and this is a great weighted pass on the run. 
These TE stunts coming at you with NFL lineman strength are virtually impossible to stop on longer developing plays. And even Trent Williams is a victim here. The right guard also gets thrown into Birdie's path, but there's no flustering the rookie who spins out and away from the rush, keeps his head up to find the check down while showing the wheels to beat the edge rusher. That's bad. That's bad accuracy, but and here it is once more it against got, the It Bucks. got the job done. Shoyinkar holds the it's edge well on the naked boot action, but Purdy nifty swims past him with the sharp breaks. Hey, he got some, he got some looseness to him. I'm gonna be honest. That's not no flukes. He keep juking out some of these D linemen and Devin Whites and stuff like that. That's not flukes. Great eyes here to keep scanning the field. And this is an absolute dime to Debo on the over. This plus movement extends to the broken That's play too. Getting back up off the floor, avoiding the rush and throwing cross body. That's a good play. Oh, so he think he Michael Vick too? And this is a superb late sidestep to avoid Javon Holland. And the release and arm angle to get this round the defender are sweet too. Shame it's short of the first down though. Now there is some chatter that much of this good play is down to the classic Shanahan scheming. And yeah, it is. Like at the end of the day, that, like, I'm gonna be honest. I like Purdy, but at the end of the day, it is. Like it is. But that's what you, as a as a team, you want a good coach, and a coach that's gonna put you in your players in the best like positions possible. It's just that simple. Like that shouldn't be held against nobody if the coach helps the players. You know what I'm saying? Now there are players that are being held against them, so they have to do more. So they're going to get a little bit more credit. But at the end of the day, you can't act like that's a negative. It's just a bonus when you do it despite coaching, if anything. You know what I'm saying? While I hope we've shown enough tape to disprove that's the only reason for his success, Shanahan has been cooking up some absolutely great stuff to ease the rookie. As in. he should. It's a rookie. And this is what a good coach is supposed Especially to do. Especially for a rookie. People act like scripting and designing plays to fit players is somehow a detriment to a quarterback. But I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. We're not going to act like these are plays that Jimmy G weren't getting called for, um, Trey Lance weren't getting, bro, these plays, they've tried to do this with all the quarterbacks they had. It's just working a lot better now because the quarterback is just being more productive and more consistent. <laughs> Simple. It's not, it's not really difficult, man. Back's evolution. But this couldn't be further from the truth. You aren't hiding your quarterback. You're helping him. Here's Facts. a good example that can get your rookie an easy throw and first down. With Now, I will say, now, I will say what the Patriots were doing last year with Mac Jones, they were definitely hiding him. That's a fact. It was hiding them. That's not really debatable. They, it was a game against the Bills. I know it was like snow and windy and stuff like that, but they, they like threw the ball like twice the whole game. You can't tell me that's helping him. That's that's just hiding him. Like that's not really, it's not really even remotely the same thing. Sprint right option. The stack release ensures an open throw, and all Purdy has to do is release in rhythm. And here they get him on the move again with the fake toss right, boot out left. The linebackers have to jump out. Is that not an alignment upfield? Look like it looked like it looked like Trent got a field. Is that not a legal man upfield? It looked like he got a field when he. It looked like he got up field too far. Out to play the toss, and Kittle is left wide open on the drag for the easy completion. And yeah, when you have weapons like this, your life is a whole lot easier. Speaking of weapons, the. I mean, Kittle is like really just a. It's not really much you can do. The only thing with Kittle, I've, I've said this time and time again, the only thing with Kittle is his health. If he's healthy, in my opinion, he's the best tight end in football because he, he just has it all. Like, he has the catching ability, the route running ability. I think the catching ability, route running ability, Kelsey definitely got that. But what makes him different is the fact that he has to run after the catch, which Kelsey also has, but I do think Kittle is better, much better in my opinion. But also, the run blocking, the pass blocking. Like, it's not really comparable when it comes to the blocking. Now, that's just me. Now, the reason why pe people say Kelsey is better, in my opinion, and why I would probably say Kelsey is actually better, because health. He's just never hurt, uh, healthy. I'm going to be honest. Like, Kittle is just never healthy. And I just, like I say, availability, best ability. Facts. The addition of Christian McCaffrey to the offense cannot but when he's out be there, overstated. Adding the white threat, Debo Samuel sure. to pair with the black Christian McCaffrey was a... Adding the white Debo Samuel with the black Christian McCaffrey is crazy. I can't lie. I can't lie, that's crazy. That's crazy. Match made in heaven. And I think we would have seen even more interchange if Debo hadn't gotten hurt. For he now, back now though. the he swaps healthy. for misalignments have been created with Kittle, producing multiple scores and defenses on skates. It's going to look even scarier if all three can be fit at the same time. Trust us. As previously mentioned, Shanahan's play calling has been a real help to the rookie. 
using the threat of the run and screen game to create chunk now another thing i want to say before we go too far before this get too deep the reason why i think the 49ers are the biggest dark horse is because last year i thought the packers had the by far best team in the league last year and that was their title shot last year to get it done the fact that they didn't get it done was the biggest surprise to me and a lot of people was giving a rod excuses but they only put up 10 points in that game when you when Devontae went as crazy as he was going in the first half where Aaron Jones was going as crazy as he did in the first half and they only put up 10 points in the entire game that is a huge deal now you can talk about the punt return or whatever the block whatever happened the only fact that they put up 10 points that was a big detriment to that team because, yeah, like the 49ers, you know what I'm saying, they have a good defense, but we're in an offensive-driven league in the NFL, and they made a lot of rules towards the offense, so it's only so much the defense can do. And if you even just go look at how crazy Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones was going in that game, you can see that the, the Packers definitely should have put up way more points than 10 points. And I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of people gave A-Rod a pass for that, but... You can see this year that they weren't nearly as good, but the 49ers, you can see that that really wasn't a fluke on the Florida United's aspect. But the fact that they didn't really have the quarterback that they really need to be able to get to that next spot to be peeing teams like the Aaron Rodgers of the world really says a lot to, for me how much I believe into Brock Purdy for this year for the 49ers to go into the playoffs this season. I didn't really have too much faith in the 49ers last year. I like their defense, but... I didn't really have too much faith, but this year I feel like they're hitting on all cylinders at the right time. I think Debo was much better last year, but I do think as a complete team, they are much, much better. Play opportunities. You know we had to show this one. Against Seattle, Purdy will hit the defense with not one, but two pump fakes to each sideline, parting the middle of the Hawks' protection and allowing Kittle to free roam on a delayed seam route. Fantastic play call from the offensive guru. And I've always loved this added wrinkle in Shanahan's zone run system. Oh my goodness, that's a, 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 that's just, that's just a great play call. Like, I don't know what you're supposed to do on it. Like, the only thing you could do on that is really get up the field. But if it's a screen play, you have to have the discipline. That's just a great play call. Like, you can't really do nothing on that as a defender. They teach you in a screen play, you got to have gap discipline and be able to protect the stuff and stuff like that. So, that's kind of tough on the defensive line to not be able to um, make a play on any of that because... That's just a good play. On the backside of an outside zone play, Shanahan will have a quick slant built in. If the QB sees off coverage, he's allowed to pivot and throw this pass. The end gets closer than you'd like, but great arm angle and placement to Ayuk here. I don't know. He might should so have ran the that. the 49ers find a diamond like in the rough? a rug? lot of space well, to go. first, we need to see him play against better defenses. Miami's show everyone stun system is getting a little stale and only being held together by two strong edge rushers. The Bucks have talent, but the line's been nowhere near. I think I think that Bucks game was a good was a good showing of how good he can be. Because if you look at that Bucks game at that time of the season, the only team to put up over like I think over like twenty one points on the uh, Bucks the whole season was the Chiefs when they put up forty one. I think the Bucks had only allowed like eighteen or twenty one to every other team besides the Chiefs, and then the 49ers came and put thirty five on them. So the fact that they pretty much doubled a lot of teams and was almost as many points as the Chiefs, and we all know how good the Chiefs offense has been this year, that really said a lot to me for how good he was playing. It's good, and there's too much freelancing. The Seahawks' D had a good three-game stretch, but outside of that, it doesn't look like they can tackle. And the commander's numbers are good, but the tape shows a defense ready to get picked on when they finally played a competent offense. Unfortunately, his next two games- I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. If you watch that uh that last game for the Cowboys, they seemed like they were struggling against that that uh Washington defense. So um, I don't know. I don't know. That I feel like the Cowboys got a competent offense. They may be chokers, but I don't know. Teams will likely produce little resistance either. The Raiders' defense only has one and a half players. He seemed to be Cardinals a little inconsistent with the accuracy. Either. This leaves his biggest defensive yeah, he seemed test to be a most likely in his first playoff start, which honestly could be rough. Luckily, he's got a pretty good defense to practice against. Outside of this, there's very little negative to report. Yeah, he's occasionally late like any old that. rookie would. That was pretty decent, And though. he's sailed on one or two Maybe a little balls, low. But the that play has been decent. very steady for a first-year player. It definitely shouldn't have been a pick. This is probably his worst throw, trying to force the ball to Ayuk. Nah, that's a crazy throw right here. You got to hit McCaffrey right here. That's no other, that's no other choice, really. McCaffrey, like, McCaffrey, they're beating bro right there in the middle. 
He did it getting past him. But even this is a great interception. His only other coming on a drop pass bobbled straight to the defense. Despite the rocky start and the continuous injuries, the 49ers find themselves ready for the playoffs. This is a deep roster with a very good defense. The only thing they really need from their offense is to limit turnovers and manage the game wisely. All things which Brock Purdy has shown the ability to do with a little bit of extra magic sprinkled in. Let's see if he can keep it up. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, I'm be honest, that's a great video. I think that's the only team he made a video for offense and defense. So that says how much he's he kind of believing in them. But I do too. I think I think I think when y'all see my NFL bracket, y'all gonna see how much I believe in them too. So yeah, that's gonna be the end of the video. If you guys want more, like the video, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share the video, all that good stuff out the way. Without further ado, though, it's your boy Fist. Now I do, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!